Hello and welcome to Aging Well. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb, and with me today uh, we have a huge amount of expertise in the studio. We have community social worker Lisa Waxman from Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Oh, excellent. And we are welcoming back uh, Protective Services social worker Nora Alwatade. Nora, welcome. Thanks. Happy to be here. Oh, excellent. So um, it's going to be a great show today. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, we invited you in to talk about self-neglect. And basically, the idea here is that with the holidays coming up, it's a time of year where people get together and they see each other again. Maybe they haven't seen each other for a few months. Um, and sometimes when that happens, when families are visiting, they notice uh, changes in the behavior or living conditions of people in their family and, and the purpose of the discussion today was to sort of talk about sort of walk people through some of the things to look for mm -hmm. and some of the ways to handle that challenge so mm -hmm. I'm thrilled you guys are here um, I guess maybe a good place to start um, the way that I've heard this defined from a protective services standpoint is self-neglect so I was sort of mm -hmm. curious if you could uh, help explain what self-neglect is absolutely um, in its most basic definition, it would be that it's a failure to meet your most basic needs. So those are like food, clothing, shelter, medical care, um, sometimes personal care. Um, the big ones that we see are um, shelter and medical care, sometimes mm -hmm. food. So it, it can vary in severity, and there's definitely a lot of different types. Absolutely, yeah. And in terms of the different types, can you give some examples on the ones that you would run across? Yeah. Um, with uh, providing shelter or not providing adequate shelter, we often see in protective services a lot of evictions, um, occasionally unsafe structures, um, unsanitary conditions in the home. With not uh, meeting basic needs with medical care, it's oftentimes not attending medical appointments, not attending to their medical needs, um, picking up prescriptions or taking them as prescribed. Um, we see a fair amount of elders that maybe their memory is declining and they can no longer manage their medications. They can get super complex and 50 pills a day is really, or exaggeration, but 20 pills a day can be quite a bit to manage. Mm -hmm. On food, we see a fair amount of also. It can be something simple like not managing um, eating the right food for your medical conditions, but also we see elders that maybe are mismanaging their finances. Um, sometimes it's on alcohol or drugs, or other times it's spending it on children. Um, but if they run out of money, they can't buy food anymore. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a big one that we actually see. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And sometimes um, inadequate personal care. Mm -hmm. can be a, another form of this neglect. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the one that, that people probably notice the most. It's the most obvious form of it as a mm -hmm. outsider looking in. Mm -hmm. um, it's sometimes losing the ability to care for oneself, mm -hmm. which can be kind of hard. Absolutely. And it seems like in things that involve safety as well, mm -hmm. like um, if you leave the stove on, things of that yeah. nature. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily fall under the other category. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this something where it can present a challenge of uh, knowing how to approach that situation when you detect it? With, with a loved one? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's really hard to have a discussion with somebody about the fact that they're losing their faculties or ability to care for themselves. Um, it's kind of natural that as we age, we lose some of our abilities and it can be extremely hard to ask for help or to even recognize when the decline's happening. Sometimes it's really slow um, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're no longer able to do the things you could do before. So what is a good way to proceed when people notice um, these signs that mm. there could be some form of self-neglect? Uh, um, uh, I can mm. open it up to... Yeah. yeah. You know, what we find the best way to proceed is to be very respectful and to really approach the situation from um, the person's point of view and to work with them, work with an older adult very slowly and have them acknowledge what they feel the issue is. Um, and work alongside with them in addressing the problem. I think it's very important to state that all adults at some point in their lives of, of any age self-neglect. We all do when we don't go to the doctor when we're not feeling well or if we don't um, eat well when we have diabetes. Uh, we all to a certain degree self-neglect. 
But unfortunately, as we get older, the stakes are higher. The consequences could be more dire. So what we try to do is we try to validate with older adults that change is really hard. Um, and for many older adults, change means loss of something. They may fear that it's going to be a loss of independence or loss of the way that they routine, routine, routinely live their lives. Mm. So acknowledging that, validating that, and being on the older adult side is the way to get in the door to develop the rapport with them. Absolutely. A lot of good points in there, especially about how it's something that we all do at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like listening, understanding, mm -hmm. uh, probably some degree of patience is involved here too, because it's mm -hmm. probably not something that people are always eager to acknowledge mm -hmm. that you, you might need help when you didn't in the past. So. Yeah, accepting help requires change. And for most adults, even younger adults, change doesn't happen overnight. So um, it, it does. It really requires um, being, feeling understood and, and trusting that, that, that accepting help will, be, will benefit you. Absolutely. And I was just going to ask, um, when people, um, people can actually report self-neglect to pr adult protective services at okay. Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, in which case they might end up speaking with you. Yep. So I was just curious, can you tell us a little bit about what happens when somebody reports self-neglect? Absolutely, yeah. Um, if you have concerns about an elder in your life, um, you can call us. Uh, that's our job is to investigate and try to figure out what's going on. If it meets our criteria, um, so it has to be pretty significant risk, um, protective services social worker would go out, and we do def call ourselves social workers, not protective service workers that are coming in to impose our will. Mm -hmm. um, we go out and meet with the elder and try to talk with them, let them know what the concerns are, and try to figure out what the root of the problem is. Um, with self-neglect, it, it can be hard because it's us pretty much saying you're not able to meet your needs anymore. That's the implication at least, and um, that's what people hear. And our message often is to let them know that we want to do what we can to keep them home for as long as possible. We'll respect their rights as much as possible. Um, it's our primary concern is to respect people's rights and we want to do harm reduction. So uh, we won't come in and shove services on people. We try to do whatever we can to make it as safe as possible. I, I have noticed that in speaking with you before that the, the not imposing of the will, mm -hmm. respecting the the wishes of the person involved is very important to you. In a lot of cases, if I remember correctly, you actually need the consent of the person being helped for them to receive help mm -hmm. for protective services, which I think people don't think of that when they hear the name protective services. They sort of think of this very prescriptive coming in and we're going to say what's what. Uh, the process you've always described whenever I've spoken with you um, sounds very different. What are some of the ways granting that somebody wants help through the program, are, what are some of the ways that people might be able, are there programs that can help people meet these needs in their homes that you're able to connect them with? Absolutely, yeah. It would depend on what the problem is. If it's eviction, that's something that we can work directly with an elder on. Um, we have access to legal resources, so that's one of the big ones. If they just need help around the house, we can help make a referral to home care. Um, sometimes people need more ongoing supports and sh protective services is very short term. Our goal is to resolve the problem quickly and then try to connect it with long term um, services for much longer. So a lot of times it's referring to home care. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's referring to our connect program. Um, if people have assets, we can refer to other programs or geriatric care managers, mm -hmm. one of those types of programs. Absolutely. So it's, it's definitely a lot of cases you're connecting people with other programs mm -hmm. that we offer. Mm -hmm. uh, for people, which is great. <clears throat> I think that's it for segment one. Uh, we'll take a brief break and be back in a minute.